Hey everyone, Lachlan here from Focal. I hope you're really excited to jump into your brand new Focal website. I just wanted to give you a quick overview of how the editor works, how you can, you know, add new galleries, new blog posts, and change out the images and the text on your website. So first thing that I'm gonna talk about is just your welcome email. If you've received your welcome email from us with the keys to your website, uh, there'll be a link in there that you can click on to create an account for your editor. Uh, you can only use that uh, link once. So after you've used that link, the way to edit your website is to simply go to your domain. Maybe it's, you know, myphotographydomain.com and then just adding a question mark and then the word edit after. Then when you hit enter, uh, it's going to open up your editor. You might have to log in and then hopefully you should be on a page just like this. So when you get into the editor, what you're going to notice is there's a lot of things that you can highlight your cursor over and you can go and edit images, for example, um, text, there'll be a little editor box and um, you can put in text just like this. There are a lot of things also on the website that you might realize you can't just click on and edit. For example, if I want to change this background image, um, when I click on it, it doesn't do anything. The reason for that is probably because whatever you're clicking on exists in your collections. And this is just a really easy way for you to manage a lot of the different major things on your website, like the hero images, um, perhaps the different categories of photography you offer, new galleries and new blog posts. And so for example, if I just wanna change that background image right there, I'm gonna click on the hero images on desktop and I can click on the home desktop image. So you're just gonna click on that home image desktop field, replace the image, wait for it to upload there, and then hit save. There you go. Now you'll see that that image is changed out and that's where you change the home desktop images. Something to note as well is that you've got both the uh, hero desktop images and the hero mobile images on your site. Depending on the focal site you're using, you may have, um, you know, home, a blog, a recent work or recent weddings category. And this is just the different pages where you can set the hero image. The way that the focal sites work as well is that the hero images are set differently for mobile and for desktop. That just makes it so, you know, you can put a portrait image on mobile and maybe more of a landscape image on desktop, just so your photos aren't getting cropped all weird and they look good on um, all device sizes. The next thing to point out here is probably galleries. So uh, to go and add a new gallery, it's really easy. You can just click new gallery. Uh, you can put in the name. So put in um, Jane Smith wedding. I recommend putting in the location. So maybe the venue and the city that that place was in or that wedding that where that wedding was. <laughs> The reason for doing this is it's going to help um, when Focal automatically configures your SEO settings to, uh, you know, show Google that that location is really important and that's where this wedding was shot. And that's just going to allow you to show up in Google search when somebody's searching for, you know, the Marriott Hotel in Kitchener Waterloo. They can come across your gallery or your blog post. Um, they can see some amazing images that you took and then hopefully want to book you. So diving in a little further here. Uh, we're going to want to set a gallery cover image as well as add some images here into the gallery. So I'll just um, take a few images from here. Put that one in as the cover image. And then we'll just drop a few images in here. These images are going to show up on the gallery as a light box. And um, that's just so clients can easily scroll through all the photos in that gallery. You can also add text to your gallery, which is something that I highly recommend. Um, you want to write maybe about the venue, about the location, the couple, anything interesting that happened at that wedding. That's just great content, something somebody's going to find interesting to read and that Google is going to treat as like high quality content. We're just going to improve your SEO. So you can put in text here into the content section of your gallery as well as your blog posts. You can also add in images directly into your post. 
and you can add videos and some other things. You can also format your content with things like bullet points and, and numbered lists. You're also, if your website supports multiple categories, so if you do more than just weddings, you'll have uh, an option to pick from the different categories for this gallery. So if this is a wedding gallery, you're gonna wanna click on weddings and that's just gonna add it into your wedding galleries section. When you're done here, it's very easy to just hit create and it's gonna automatically generate that blog post. It's going to submit it to your Google search console so it can show up on Google and all the SEO configuration is gonna be perfectly structured. So now if I go over here to my galleries, I'm actually gonna see that gallery showing up here. So the Jane Smith wedding, the Marriott Hotel in Kitchener Waterloo. And if I click in here to actually view that wedding gallery, I'm gonna see the text that I added in there, the title, the date, as well as all these images here, which um, are gonna have a light box functionality. Another thing to note about the galleries is most of the galleries have a call to action field right here. So there's this call to action link. And what you wanna put in there is wherever you want clients to go after you know, looking at this gallery and thinking, hey, I really want to book, you know, you as a photographer for this. And so they probably want to have a look now at your packages, whatever the next step is um, in the booking process. So a really great place to send them is either to, you know, a direct package page or to your, um, you know, your, for in this example, your wedding uh, category on your uh, pricing page. For now, I'll just put this package link in there. Um, and you know what I'm going to do actually as well is there's a video field and I'm going to show you what happens when we add a video in there. I'm just going to go ahead and grab Taylor's latest Leica M6 and Kodak video and put the link in here. Um, and when I hit save, that's going to automatically add that video into the gallery as well. So those of you that do video and photo, uh, this is a really great way to showcase the, the video on the blog or the gallery posts. So now you'll see that video is automatically showing up. All the images are in here. And where that call to action link goes is actually in the button here. So when somebody's clicking on contact and pricing, uh, that's going to take them now directly to wherever that call to action link was um, set up for. So now I'm just going back to the editor. That covers pretty much the, the galleries. The blog posts are going to be very similar. The reason we have the separation between the galleries and the blog posts is, is mainly just so, you know, the galleries can be strictly photos, videos, talking about particular couples and then you know, particular couples or clients or families, whoever, whoever it is that you're putting in there. Um, the blog posts are really great for other things like, you know, talking about your favorite locations around town, your favorite venues, perhaps, uh, you know, what to wear to your shoot sort of content posts. Those are really, again, really great for SEO, provide a lot of value to your clients and um, show how experienced and professional you are as a photographer. So here are the blog posts. Uh, it's going to be a very similar setup to the galleries here. Um, you'll notice that there also is a um, call to action button text. What that is, is you can put in a link and then uh, you can put in some text such as browse packages what's going to happen is that um, it's going to generate a button on your blog post page uh, as a call to action. You can also choose not to fill these in and then your blog post um, simply won't have a direct call to action. Depending on the blog post, you may or may not want to have something like that. So let's go back to the site here. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it for blogs and galleries. A couple other collections to just be aware of is some of your sites will have an Instagram post field. So that's where you can just add an image, a uh, link to your Instagram, uh, even to that, or even to that particular post, you can put that in there and replace the uh, images out. Lastly, uh, you'll have a logo collection. That's where you'll probably have a spot to replace your logo. So if you ever update your logo, uh, you can easily replace it up here and it will get swapped out. You can also click on certain elements like this logo directly on the editor.
So that pretty much covers it. Um, that's sort of the focal uh, website editor. It's very easy to use, very simple. Most of the things you're gonna either be able to cl click directly on the page and edit, or you can go into the collections there and uh, replace things like the hero images or the galleries and the blog posts. So of course, as always, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to message the Fogel team. Uh, our Facebook page is a great way to get a hold of us. However, you're chatting with us during the website building process. We're very responsive and we want to make sure you're happy with your site. So feel free to reach out and um, we're happy to answer any questions you may have about your website. Um, beyond that, we'll be creating some more more in-depth videos about certain parts of the focal websites as well as the booking contracts and payment system so stay tuned for those